Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial. Today I will show you evil twin method. This will complement a lot of other things along the way, uh, not only that which will come later, but also it complements that which we've already done. Primarily because evil twin allows you to steal all sorts of traffic. Now you are effectively with this method what you are doing, you are cloning the wireless access point and then all the clients that are authenticated to that access point can get uh, can get de-authenticated and the next time they automatically reconnect they will reconnect back to you should your signal strength be stronger. Now the issue of signal strengths you are able to boost the signal strength on your own if you're using Linux and if you have proper drivers it won't work on all network wireless network cards but you can always get an external antenna for your laptop, a USB wireless antenna or something of a kind. I do believe they cost maybe, uh, you get a wireless network card that goes over a USB and then that wireless network card has an antenna. They, I think you can get one for 20 bucks, something like that. They're pretty cheap. Make sure that they're compatible in terms of drivers and your signal can be a lot stronger than anybody else that is nearby or you can simply come close to somewhere you can you can go if you're in a bar or something like that your signal should always be stronger for people that are closer to you unless they have like crazy good Wi-Fi system in a bar or something of a kind also useful in companies or something like that while people this has been known uh, People have been doing this, they go into a lobby and, I don't know, they're waiting for something. And they have a laptop that's in their bag or something like that, and that laptop is working while they're waiting for somebody, so they're not suspicious at all or anything of a kind. And especially if you have 100 people in a huge lobby or something of a kind, you will practically be invisible and be able to take a lot of information that way. However, you will face the problem of encryption once again, but encryption is, we are not doing this for the sake of perhaps cracking the VPA2 pass, pass key because it can be cracked in this way through a little bit of social engineering. But you can also, what you can also do here is play around with people's information. So play around with their URL HTTP GET requests and you can modify their net queries also, you are in control of what gets served to them. So you can control the content that gets served to them, primarily because you can alter the DNS servers. And if you alter DNS servers, uh, you can have customized MX records or something of a kind. What this allows you to do is say that Facebook.com will be resolved to some other IP address than the official one. So to whatever to whatever server you want, you can redirect the traffic, which is fantastic because you can clone a Facebook page. Uh, I'm just specifying Facebook as an example here. This can be done for pretty for any other site, and this is practically a foolproof way of getting credentials for any site at all. Uh, by changing the DNS, serv DNS servers and if you configure the DNS servers on a router or on a PC somewhere or in a network somewhere, you will be able to give them your own DNS servers and your own DNS servers will point the users in very specific directions. They will point them to the cloned websites that you will clone and that you will host on your Apache web server. And once they type the credentials in, they will be yours for the taking which is which can be extremely painful uh, okay so let's say they make a query to a website they try to log in login will fail of course but you will get their credentials and as soon as you get their credentials you can redirect traffic elsewhere or something like that to a legit page there are there are limitless options here there was a lot of things which you can do that people tend to do in real life and a lot of accounts get stolen this way however DNS attacks and all of that we will do a little bit later for the time being. I just want to show you how you can control, how you can, uh, how you can clone a Mac, clone a wireless access point and redirect all traffic to yourself and therewith have a good measure of control over it. Anyway, we're going to be using one of Aircrack's tools today that is Airbase. I have, I have the command listed down below. You let me just zoom it in. 
So we're going to need Airbase, which will be our cloning, which will be our tool used for cloning. And down below, I have Airplay-ng. We have used that before for the authentication. Anyway, let's just go ahead and proceed with this. The first thing that we need to do, of course, is, well, scan to see what sort of, what is, where we are, what's in our environment, what sort of MAC addresses do we have, what sort of access points do we have, and in order to do that, we need monitor mode, as always. So, ifconfig vlp2s0 down, uh, iv oops, fig vlp2s0 zero mode monitor on dash dash oops error mon dash ng op to us zero kill network manager will go down first four seven three four and then I need to kill ooh I have DHC clients need to kill that too thirty 664. Okay, that one died already. Let's see. 11, 2, 8, 9. Excellent. Let's perform a check now. Okay, I'm gonna leave these running. I'm pretty sure that they won't interfere. Now, the commands that I've typed in now, I'm not gonna explain them in detail. They are explained in the previous tutorials. Now we're gonna go ahead and do some scanning. So, uh, arrow dump dash ng and just oops clear arrow dump dash ng vlp 2 s 0 press enter and there we go there's a scan in progress I'm gonna wait I'm not gonna hold the scan here one of my this is my this is my wireless access point something as before it's pretty strong here. I'm gonna have to move it to the next room or something like that in order to get a bit of a better signal. I'm gonna connect a device to it and down below we're gonna see a jump but it doesn't really matter. That's not what we are after. We just need to clone it but down below you have all of these authenticated clients to the stations. I need to zoom this out to show them all. There's quite a bit of them. And there we go. I seem to be authenticated. I'm pretty sure at the time that my device is one of these. Doesn't really matter. I just wanted to connect it. Anyway, now that we have all this information from the scan, we're gonna go ahead and take this one. Take the MAC address. Just go ahead and copy it and type in the following. Air. Okay, let's just clear the screen. I can't clear the screen. I need the information. Let me just zoom it in. So air base dash ng space dash a mac address paste the mac address a good idea is to copy paste the mac addresses so you ensure that you are not making any mistakes of whatsoever now you need e s s i d uh, i'm pretty sure that you don't need to use quotation marks but if it's like a two part or something like that uh, then you will need to use the quotation marks to make sure to make sure that the string is loaded properly and then we need a channel of course what will be the channel uh, channel 6 for those of you who have enabled your monitor mode via airmon ng start vlp 2 s 0 it will create a virtual interface uh, which is mon 0 I didn't do that so I'm just going to use vlp 2 s 0 like this press enter and now that I have my fake wireless access point running. I am going to deauthenticate pretty much everybody on the real uh, on the real access point with the ESSID something. Now, once I deauthenticate them, if they attempt to automatically reconnect, they will all reconnect automatically back to me. And for that, I'm going to need AirPlay ng zero zero a and then this MAC address here. This is the this is simply the MAC address of the real wireless access point, the one that we are faking here. Anyway, let me just go ahead and press enter. Now I'm sending the deauthentication packets, and you see immediately I uh, there's a client being reassociated with me. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the deauthentication packets, but I will leave this running. And you see it says reassociated. 
unencrypted to ESSID something. Now what we can do with this traffic, how can we... Uh, I'm not going to show you how to modify it now, I've showed that in the part for fun where you can do all sorts of trickery, but we will do more serious stuff as well. However, now I would like to show you how you can actually monitor this traffic and what you can what you can extract, what sort of information can you extract from it. Anyway, I bid you all farewell and I hope to see you all in the next tutorial.